everybody. And when people ask me for advice, my main thing is build a morning routine before you start trading. You know, uh, take care of your body, mind, and your soul. Like yeah. doctors, lawyers, and people like with very specialized areas struggle the most in trading uh, because it almost goes down to, well, I will work hard, I will get rewarded, right? Mm, no, yeah. that that's number one. The last thing you want to do is go from a warm bed into a freezing cold shower, the last thing. But to me, that is my core of building my discipline into my day because I thought individual coaching because I would rather to see... 10 traders really succeed rather than spread it out to thousands, but they still feel like they don't have the guidance, you know? What's up traders? Welcome to the day trading show. My name is Austin Silver. I'm your host. Today, we sit down with my co-host, James Bruce, and our special guest, Paulina Yazviak. Now, Paulina is a Twitter famous trading psychology coach. She actually coached one of the previous guests we've had on the podcast, Brian Tang. So we talk about her coaching Brian. We talk about how she got into the coaching space, how she got into trading herself. We even talk a lot about her psychological tactics of how she's helping traders not make the mistakes that cost all of us money. So you're going to love this episode. It is a little longer than usual, but that's because Paulina is really easy to listen to and she gives a lot of value in this episode, a lot of value in this conversation. I want to let you guys know, ASFX TV, our live streaming service, we dropped the price recently. If you haven't known, haven't noticed, it's now $10 per month. There's a link in the description where you can trade with me, James, and the rest of our team all week long. And you can take a three-day free trial using that link. So wherever you're listening or watching, the link is in the description to the episode. All of the links for Paulina, for James, for everybody are also down there. So make sure you check that out. Now, enjoy the conversation with James and Paulina. All right, traders, listen up. Before we continue with today's podcast, I have to share with you some important information because a lot of you come to me asking, how can you help me make more money, Austin? What does that process look like? The simple answer is you join the Black Shirt Club, which is our all-inclusive 12-week trading mentorship program, and you work with me every single day. In the Black Shirt Club, we don't just trade together. You get weekly private coaching sessions. You also get a year for free, that's $550 worth of value, to trade Zella, to track your trades, to journal properly. So we actually have some data to make the adjustments from. But really, I think the bigger overarching thing you get in the Black Shirt Club is accountability and feedback from traders with more experience than you. Those two things alone are worth thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars. Because think about it, you're learning how to make unlimited income and you're saving yourself tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars in potential losses. Remember, when I started trading, I had no mentorship. I lost almost $50,000 in the first two years. If I can save you from losing 50 Gs, how much would you pay me? I want you guys to book a call with me. It's probably flying in up here. The link is in the description. Book a call. It's 10 minutes. It's free. If the Black Shirt Club is something that you're interested in, it is a little bit of a time commitment. It's for serious traders, not brand new people, but you get everything included. Like I said, Tradezilla, my course is included. I'll even give you a month free of ASFX TV. So book a call. If this interests you, let's hop on and see if you're a good fit. It's not for everybody. I am definitely selective in who I allow into the club, but if I think I can make an impact on you after that welcome call, we'll get rolling. We'll get the 12 weeks popping and we'll get you making more money. Link is down below. Like I said, maybe it flew in above my head. Tap it, book the call, and I'll speak with you guys soon. Again, thank you for being a listener of the podcast. Let's get back to the video. All right, traders, welcome back. We've got a special episode today. I am sitting with my co-host, Mr. James Bruce. He's on the road. James, it's good to see you, brother. And we are sitting down with Paulina. Paulina is a extremely well-known trading coach. She is a heavy, heavy Twitter user when it comes to getting involved in the Twitter space. So we're looking forward to having Paulina here to talk about trading, to talk about her background, just everything psychology, everything that we all love to discuss. So Paulina, it's good to have you on the show. Thank you so much, Austin. I'm really excited to be here. It's been a long time coming. So um, I'm looking forward to diving deep into uh, some of the topics. And thank you for a wonderful introduction. I appreciate it. Oh, of course. Is that a good intro? Is is tr Do you want to be known mostly right now as a trading coach. I took that from, you know, Twitter and everything. I did no, some no, research. This is, this is perfect. Good. Fantastic. Beautiful. How long have you been doing this, Paulina? Just catch everybody up that doesn't know you. I, I, I know you through Twitter. I think a lot of my listeners are very heavily involved in the Twitter space, like, you know, finance stuff on Twitter. So they probably have seen your stuff because some of your stuff has gone viral. But like, how long have you been in the trading 
education, trading, coaching space? Yeah. Okay, so um, I actually have been trading myself for about four and a half years to five years, uh, okay. about around that time. Uh, but I do have psychology background, so I actually studied psychology at university. And overall now, looking at my whole experience, I've got over a decade of experience. So as I started coaching, uh, sorry, as I started trading, um, I was involved in the academy. And because, you know, I'm a very much people's person and technicals actually came quite easy to me. I was helping a few people around and then I've been asked to become a mentor literally six months into trading, you know, uh, which I was like, wow, yeah, of course, I'm going, going to do it. So that's kind of the way it all began. Uh, so I started, you know, mentoring people through that academy. Um, and then two years ago, I've decided to do it on my own. However, I didn't want to do it the standard way of, you know, perhaps creating a course or a subscription service. I thought, well, the best thing that I can do and I would love to do is to marry up my experience from psychology and from trading, because I know the inside out of what the traders are struggling with, because I struggled with it myself too. And I've worked with plenty of people. So about two years ago, I've set up my own coaching service. Again, I didn't want to go down the route of courses and all of that. I thought, individual coaching because I would rather to see 10 traders really succeed rather than spread it out to thousands but they still feel like they don't have the guidance you know and uh, so that's kind of how it all happened and I feel like the experiences that I went through just joined up together and it just literally made sense for me to do that I love that that's a very quick but organic way yeah. to kind of get pushed into that who who were some of the people that you would credit like introducing you to trading and what were you doing before trading i'm just curious oh yeah okay so uh, actually um uh, before trading uh i worked at the royal college of psychiatrists in london uh so i've worked there for five years uh, and we were essentially delivering research to support changes in nhs in england uh so they rece received funding to improve mental health services. So we were putting all the evidence together through uh, research, science, and also um, experts' experience. So people who had suffered with some mental health problems. And we were putting it together into guides and then providing that to the service. The service then was implementing that in NHS. So that was essentially my job. Now, um, I... All of that was in London and then my best friend uh, came to London with her husband and she's like oh yeah we're coming to London he's doing a work training and I was like all right cool cool so he was over the weekend doing the work training and you know I was like hanging out with her then he comes back um on his last day and I'm like so what's this work training that you're doing because he's a salesman so I was like oh it's something probably to do with that he's like no 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 nothing to do with that it's forex I was like tell me more forex what, what is it you know tell me more and to be honest that was about five years ago and it was not as popular online like there were not as many courses um online it, it was just not as viral as it had gone viral during covid so I always kind of wanted to get into it. I was always interested but I had no idea where to even start. So this is where literally it happened organically only because he decided to do it because his brother went to Jordan Belford's speech. That's crazy. So <laughs> he went to his speech with his friend. You know, they call then... James the Wolf of Wall Street. Actually, the Baldy of Wall Street. <laughs> and then... <Yeah. laughs> so, and he came back and he was like, to um, my best friend's husband, he was like, you have to do it. I can't do this. You have to do Forex. You have to do Forex. And actually he ended up not doing Forex. It, it was me that ended up doing Forex. It's all happens for a reason, right? Like it always comes. That. To, that's such I an interesting that. sequence of events to get you to that point. And then of course, I'm sure when you got into trading, you fell down. I'm, I'm going to guess the same rabbit hole that we did where you're reading books, you know, whether it's the trading in the zone or the Brett Steenbarger stuff, just trying to consume yeah. as much content as possible. Am I kind of on the right track there? 
absolutely i i became obsessed with it that's for one and I as think, some of us tend to do i know it's everybody yeah. it's kind of it becomes like an obsession and i think forex is you either love it or hate it because i know some people that tried and they're like nah this is not for me and yes i went through the rabbit um into that rabbit hole of right i'm going to teach myself on youtube uh you know and i remember i watched um adam Koo's video uh, very which, popular like, yep very popular and, and it was that first video of introducing it and stuff like that and i was like this is brilliant but i was like well, where's part two where's part three and then i went on his website and he's selling a course and i was like i'm by i'm buying no course i'm gonna do it myself so uh then i went into that rabbit hole signals being scammed yeah. Yeah. not not by much and uh, just a few hundreds of pounds and someone telling me oh i'm gonna flip your account into this and that and um, so so doing all of that and then eventually i joined the academy and i've joined a few other courses as well like elliot waves and stuff like that and i was a bit like all over the place and um, but after like three months into just being all over the place i thought right i need to settle for one kind of concept and then kind of go with it and it was like very simple price action and you know again i had some ups and downs with it uh, but interestingly the biggest problem that i had was psychology mm. you know and it was crazy because i have psychology background but the biggest thing that played a role here was my ego that was the biggest problem uh, because I did have the psychology background. And actually, when I started Forex, I had no idea the role that psychology plays in Forex success. So then once I started experiencing those problems, I said to myself, you, you have that knowledge, you fine. But I knew the theory, but I was not actually implementing it. And again technicals actually came quite easy to me I was and he was he, he was mad like I would get up at seven in the morning I would open my screen stare my screen for 12 hours close it and then I but but you know it was good in a way because I hated back testing back, uh, back then because I didn't know how to do it so I was just watching life markets all the time which actually gave me a good insight of even like how the one H candle opens, what does it do? What's his behavior? Like it's moving first down and up. What does it create on five minute pattern? And I was really, like really obsessed with, you know, all the dynamic of the life market. So that kind of helped, but the road was tough. Really, really tough. I think it is for most people, you know what I mean? But it is the passion and that like addictive mm. personality that drives us to keep going through the, the tough times in a way that is your ego kind of fueling you yeah. through the tough times too. But then yeah. like you said, as you get into trading and you start to see how the technicals are not the most difficult part of trading, it is keeping the ego in control. Yeah. That's when the ego can actually start to hurt you. So that was, I think, very well said. So before we go into the psychology stuff, I do want to dive deep into that, Paulina. Can you just tell us a little bit about like your trading strategy now and what you do on a daily basis? How many hours a day are you trading? What does that actually look like for you? Yes, absolutely. So I've actually um, mixed a lot of different strategies together. So it's not that I went one route and kind of picked one course and that's how I trade, but I kind of picked out and filtered out everything. And I think that's necessary uh, for every trader to do because that's essentially how you develop your edge. You are kind of experimenting, you are learning new things, and eventually you are going to, you know, pick out what works for you that is suited to your personality, et cetera. So, you know, I went down the route also like trading one minute time frame, SMC and, and all of that. But then I was like, that does not suit my personality. And even though I found myself in profit, then when I was doing like my quarterly reviews, then I saw that my profit target at the end was one to two anyway. But I took like 200 trades. So I was like, What's the point in that? I may as well enter on five, 15 minutes time frame or hourly and just go for one to two, you know, and yeah. because mm -hmm. I do believe as well that, you know, analysis actually is not that hard, but entry into the market 
and exit out of the market are the most crucial things um, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. in trading. So now I use, you know, weekly, daily to kind of just have the overall overview of what is going on in the markets. It's very much like supply and demand kind of thing, uh, understanding where the liquidity is, price action, and really premium and discount, like my best friend, like, you know, sell high, buy low, like that's how simple it is. And just following price action of higher highs, higher lows. And mainly entries on 15 minutes like that that is it so the easiest nice. thing that i could say to anybody take the direction of 4h enter on 15 minutes that is in line of the direction of 4h you fine yeah uh, you know? yeah. and, and how many I trades per week like yeah i found my piece there so um this week i told you about this week so far so monday yesterday I took a loss uh, after that loss i just walked away from my screens today zero trades and we'll see what happens for the rest of the week. So, so like maybe three to five trades a week, it sounds like. Yes. Yeah, 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 essentially. And, you know, when I have done some challenges just with that technique, I was able to sometimes pass a challenge in one week if the markets provide. But at the same time, I could also be in 5% drawdown if every trade mm -hmm. I enter is a loss, you know. Sure. But I understand my edge. I understand my losing streaks, my winning streaks. So kind of what percent i can allow myself to lose in the market um and, and when i kind of trade one percent risk then two trades is like max because yeah. if i'm wrong about two trades on 15 minutes and um 15 minutes in terms of entries i'm probably wrong about the bias like i'm in the same way i have i think yeah, james that, you have the same same kind of rule right mm. Yeah, yeah. So I, I actually trade pretty similarly to how you kind of trade as well. Mm -hmm. I trade mostly based off the 15 minutes and I do use the five minute, but I've been actually gravitating. So I started trading five and a half years ago, uh, started and then picked up with Austin. We're actually speaking in, yeah. our, in our live trading room today. Like I wouldn't be where I am today without Austin. I really appreciate his input in my life. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, just uh, I started trading on the one minute time frame, which was one of Austin's entry and exit signals. And then I kind of just deviated now slowly as I'm getting older and losing more hair from all the stress that trading brings. I've been deviating more towards the 15 minute time frame and looking at the hourly and then tr taking trades based on the 15 yeah. minute time frame. Um, like I was shorting GU and EU today. I made a bit of money before the news came out. Um but I wanted to, there was just a question. So you spoke about, uh, you know, just being immersed in the chart, spending 12 hours a day on the chart. So something that maybe I want to speak or ask you about is um, how do you separate the difference between life and, and charts? Because how I see it is, right, I've just got engaged and I'm going to have children one day. Austin's a little mm -hmm. bit further down the line. He's he's married, got a child. How do you separate life and trading and actually combine them into two to make them successful? Because at one end of the stick, you want to make sure that you're working hard and you're working on your edge you know, every single week. But yeah. at the end of the day, we get into trading because we want to spend time with loved ones, right? How do you find a great balance? So... um. I think it's all about really setting boundaries and boundaries within yourself and boundaries in how you manage things, because it essentially is like as if you worked at nine to five, you have certain kind of routine and timetable. And I think the positive factor that we have as traders is that we don't have to sit there nine to five. We can choose whether we are sitting during the London session, New York session, and this is where we need to then make our partners aware those are the times that I am working, I am not available. And this is another thing that is really worth mentioning because it's something that I'm like kind of had to go through as well with my partner is that, you know, um, because they see you at home sitting there, they just chat to you and they're just like, oh yeah, right. And I'm like, no, no, it's not talk time. Like we're not talking, you know? <laughs> So I think it's just so very, very important. And I think it's beautiful that, you know, like Austin, congratulations on your beautiful boy. Like, you know, that you, you are able 
you are able to be there and see him grow every day. I think about that every day. I think about how that's so fucking cool. You know what I mean? Like how many other dads don't get to do that. So I'm very grateful for that. But I think the boundaries is so important because like Mm. if if, on both sides of it, because you're, you're making the, the, this is the most important point. And this is the same thing. James asked you this question. Cause I'm, I'm going to guess James, cause you saw Anthony Crudelli's tweet about this. I saw you posted it. Like it is important to, for traders to be thinking about how do you find the balance, but it is yeah. also Paulina. It's easy to say, create boundaries. It's very difficult to let those boundaries yeah. be held in place and actually see them to be solid. You know what I mean? Sometimes those boundaries become very translucent if, if you know what I'm saying. Right. So do you have any more like direct advice maybe that you've been telling some of your guys that you're coaching that, Hey, set boundaries, but do this in order to set the boundary. Cause it's setting the boundary and then having the discipline to hold yourself to it. Right. What's up traders. I just want to take a second from today's episode to thank myself. I'm being funny, but also being serious. ASFX TV is the proud sponsor of today's podcast. Now, some of you might not know what ASFX TV is. Maybe you're living under a rock and I'm here to pull you out. What we are now offering is for less than $1 per day. After your three day free trial, you can watch me and our team of funded full-time traders every day, at least twice a day, London session and New York session, as we navigate the live market. You can watch to see the strategies applied from our course. You can watch to see how we're constantly developing them and trying to tweak them and improve them. You're going to see how we navigate through news. Really what you're seeing is the ups and downs of full-time trading. We don't show or we don't shy away from our losses. We don't shy away from showing more wins. We show you the real reality of being a full-time trader. So I've got a link in the description for a three-day free trial. Like I said, I want you guys to come check it out. I appreciate you very much for listening to the podcast for being a constant viewer staying through with us and i want you to enjoy many more podcasts to come but i also want you to make money with us and the way that i can help you do that is on asfx tv so hit the link come check it out and enjoy the rest of the video exactly discipline is the key word here uh, and i think you know it is all about structure because um so i'm very much into like uh, bob proctor and you know and all of that but one he's of a the legend key- he's the he, legend he is he's like my god i think i don't know boy like i love him so much i really really do and you know one of the key things whether you believe in law of attraction or not that doesn't matter one of the key things he says everything has to be organized your thoughts have to be organized your emotions have to be organized your life has to be organized like even if you have a goal but you don't have like a correct organization of how you are going to get there you're just going to float around and you're going to get confused and you're going to get overwhelmed and you're not going to see the progress so I am very big on the routine and it's also ironic because I am a bit like of a you know call it free spirit you know I'm not one of those people that kind of you know notes everything down when I make notes there are some notes here and there and there but um you know for me the biggest thing was to implement a routine into my day especially into trading because if we don't set those boundaries just us as traders we can get stuck and we can see something you know this is what's happening etc and and sometimes uh, trading view alarms can be extremely helpful and be our nemesis because when we meant to be away from the charts they go off and this is that discipline when you're like i i don't care it's not you know it's not my trading hours and i'm not going to look into it etc so i think Again, it's also about open conversation uh, with people around you who are understanding your job and to, you know, to say to them, do you know what, this is the routine that I want to follow uh, and this is what we have to do, but I'm not very good at it. And I need your support as well to remind me about certain things. And I think that is so very important. But what I would say brings really good boundaries into your day as a trader is how you start your day. And I'm so big on it. I'm so big on it. Morning routine. And honestly, I, you know, I get a lot of people messaging me on Twitter, etc. And I always try to respond to everybody. And when people ask me for advice, my main thing is build a morning routine before you start trading, you know, uh, take care of your body, mind and your soul. Like yeah. that is kind of like my general rule. And once you will start implementing, and I even posted it today, this morning, a cold shower may not make you a millionaire, but the discipline of doing it might. That's you know? it. 
That's it. So that's really what people, I feel like a lot of people get confused. They think we talk about the morning routine stuff because we want to be like, Hey, you got to go meditate. You got to go do, it's not any of that. It's about setting a standard of discipline, holding yourself to it, and then being disciplined in that daily practice. Is it fair to say in your previous comment before the morning routine that the way to implement the boundaries would be discipline, but then the way to execute the discipline is to be held accountable to the discipline? Is it Mm -hmm. to ask someone, whether it's your partner or someone you trade with, it's get that accountability so you have no other option other than to be disciplined or to just be held accountable for falling off the wagon. And then you can have that, you have to have that conversation, which none of us want to have. Nobody wants to talk to your business partner or your life partner or your trading buddies about why you were not disciplined today. Nobody wants to talk about that. Mm -hmm. So having that in the back of your mind, like if I have a bad day and James is going to see my daily report card, he's going to come talk to me. So if I don't want to have that conversation, I can just have the discipline to not let the bad day happen. So I'm really... What I'm hearing, tell me if I'm wrong, Paulina, it's that accountability is like that secret key to keeping you as disciplined as possible. Absolutely. 100%. I love that you have report card at the end of the day. That's so cool. I, yeah. I want to, I want to like find out more about oh, that. I'll show, we could, I'll show it to you. We could, I'll even share it with you. We just have a simple, like little daily report card because I think you try to sit down with somebody. So in our coaching program, we sit down with them once per week. We trade together every day in this small group setting, but we sit individually with one of the guys each week. So they get a coach, whether it's me, Tom, James, or Evan. And on that call, if we do the call, like I have most of my calls on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, if we sit down on Friday with Mike and Mike has traded all week, how am I going to remember? Or how is he going to remember what he did on Monday and yeah. how he felt at the end of the day and mm-hmm. how he felt in the middle of the day? Like today, we had that crazy news about JPY come out, caused a 500 pip spike or whatever. We want to hear those thoughts in that moment of that day yeah. so we don't forget them. So I'm big on the daily report cards, Paulina. And I'm, I'm yeah. of course, happy to share any of that with you. James, is, oh. James has been good at it for longer than I think most people. He's always been about that 1% per day improvement. James has never been the kind of guy. Oh. And that's why I've kept him around, to be honest. It's not because he's this good looking bald guy that looks like uh, Bruce Willis. It's because he's so consistent. Uh-huh. In his approach. And his approach mm-hmm. is very discretionary. Like all, a lot of the people that watch and trade on our streaming thing, they'll tell you like James is very discretionary in his trading, but it doesn't matter about how he trades. At the end of the day, he does his daily report card. He gets the review done. He documents the trades that he's taking. And I think that's why he continues to improve. Ask him, Paulina. It is, we were talking about it on uh, the in the chat this morning or yesterday, James, how hard it is to get some of these guys to just do a chart markup of the trade they took, yeah. let alone yeah. the daily report card. Yeah. Just asking them for a markup is like taking their fingernails off. It's crazy, right, James? Uh, well, uh, yeah, well, I will say, I will say this is that uh, I won't lie, daily report cards aren't my favorites, but uh, Austin has to be on my case about them uh, every now and again. Oh, but, yeah, if he doesn't do uh, it, he know, knows I'm going to say something kind of, in front of the whole group, right? Yeah. I'm going to call him out in front of everybody. 100%. That, that's, 100%. That's it. But, you know, but that's how it should be, you know, and I think if you don't have friends like that, that actually, you know, mm. want the best for you, like if I'm stuffing around, Austin's not going to be like, oh, James, don't worry, you're doing well. Like he's going to call me out and be like, dude, this is not your best. Like if you want to make a million dollars in your trading, you got to be better than this. Um, so I think that, uh, you know, just doing those and just loving the discipline, just something that um, I wanted to actually maybe speak about as well in terms of 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 spe- being able to speak to other people about like having a community, right? Austin's like, Austin are friends on and off the desk. Um, I regard him as one of my, one of my very good friends. Um, having people that you can actually speak to about uh about trading on and off the desk so my my fiance now amanda has um has her honors degree in psychology but she always now i'm asking this question live on on camera because i want her to i want to show you this but what are your thoughts on having like a significant other that you can actually speak to about trading and ask uh, questions to about the reason i ask this is because i always say to amanda she follows my trading journal every single day she knows what i'm doing she um, follows she, she can read uh, live updates of my of my trading what i'm doing on the desk and how my, what my results are looking like on each one of my different accounts that i trade um just to hold me accountable but um what are your thoughts on uh yeah just having a significant other to speak to about it um particularly amanda because she says it's a conflict of interest right because the, you know coming from a professional uh, background like yeah. you guys she says it's a conflict of interest because she's obviously always going to want me to do well yeah but yeah what are your what are your thoughts on on that 
well I think that is so beautiful you, you know having a partner um you know that actually supports you to such degree that she holds you accountable and she checks it and she's like oh have you been okay today and stuff like that and you know before I go into that I just want to highlight that those reports cards are absolutely phenomenal I tell traders to do something similar like score themselves at the end of the day from one to ten and they can score themselves under different categories so don't forget the daily markups that is one job in terms of your analysis but now reflect did you analyze well did you execute well what were your emotions like what type of emotions have you experienced how would you score your performance at the end of the day from one to ten i don't care about the trades outcome I, I care about whether you stuck to your routine, whether you analyzed well, whether you've executed, because let me highlight another thing. Discipline is not just um, doing your analysis. Discipline is also executing the trade where you said you would. That That is discipline, you know? People forget that because people think, okay, I'm doing the analysis. Oh, but I didn't enter because X, Y, and Z. No, the discipline is actually executing where you said you would with the stop loss you said you would and getting out where you said you would you know or depending on your strategy you might be getting out and have a different system so that is extremely important because that also maybe james can share that with us is like that gives you a certain pattern and you may notice simplest things like on fridays i always take a loss or on fridays i always feel frustrated why? Well, because it's end of the week and I've been working my nine to five and trading and taking kids to school. And actually on Fridays, I'm so exhausted. I can't make sense of the markets anymore. Okay, let's cut Fridays out. And immediately your win rate is going to spike. Because Without adding any wins, everybody. Exactly. Not adding any wins, taking something away. Exactly that. So people always ask me, oh, so how do I increase my win rate? And I was like, okay, we need to filter out some information here in terms of your lifestyle, emotions, etc. Now, going back to James's question, I think accountability is the number one thing. Reason is because we need to learn how to stay accountable towards ourselves. It's a skill. You know, everybody always tells you on Twitter, on social media, be disciplined, be accountable, be this and that. And actually, yeah. when I watched your interview uh, podcast with Brian, Brian was like, yeah, but tell me how to do it, <laughs> you know? Yes. And- yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yo, I love Brian. We got we to gotta talk about your and Brian too. But yeah, keep going. I love Brian. He's a good guy. So, so, you know, and, and this is where me and Brian clicked because I was saying, this is what you have to do. We want to, this is the problem. This is how we're going to build awareness around the problem. This is what we want to achieve. So in order between realizing the problem and achievement, there is a road and we have to take that road kind of thing, you know? So um, it is so, so extremely important. You know, I've lost the train of thought now. I'm lost. Like No, it's okay. Because now you're thinking about Brian. So let's talk about that for a second, just because so. James, do you know who she's talking about? Brian, that was just on the podcast a couple of uh, yeah, Brian Shannon at the time of film. No, 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 Brian Tang. So she, not Brian. Oh, Shannon, Brian so she, Tang. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yes, Brian the, Tang. the young yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah. He's he's like he's I very. Yeah. I asked him. I said, Brian, how old are you? He said, approximately twenty one. <laughs> that already, I was like, oh, Brian, you're funny. So he's, and he's like, he's like he's like Colin, bro. Exactly, bro. But he's also like no BS. Like that's why I really wanted to talk to him yes. because I could tell through his Twitter he was like very, very detail oriented, very meticulous. And there are certain characteristics that you don't see often from people on Twitter. So with Brian, talk about just like the coaching that you put him through specifically. And maybe he won't mind. I'm sure we could talk about some of the areas he struggled in, and maybe if you could speak on how he overcame some of those struggles too, Paulina. So yeah, of course. And I actually remember my previous point as well. So I'm going to no. Back. Go ahead. Start with that. <laughs> With the previous point? Yeah, I... yeah, let's go there okay. and then we'll go to Brian. So I, I was, we were talking about accountability and uh, like it's so important to mention it's a skill, right? So now um, in terms of accountability as traders, we are on our own. So if you think about CEOs of big companies, if you think about nine to five jobs, if you think about school system, anything in a system, you always have a group of people around you. And I don't know whether you ever noticed that, but sometimes when you are alone at home with a problem and then you decide to go to a cafe or something, your problem doesn't seem as big because you're surrounded by people and you feel that sense of community. Now, even CEOs in finance, whatever, they make a call and they book a big loss, right? 
they've got advisors around them. They've got people around them that they can bounce the ideas off and kind of take advice from take support from etc as traders we need to develop all of that ourselves we need to be our own ceos we need to be our own employees we need to support ourselves but we need to be critical enough to make sure that we grow and in order to apply all of those things to ourselves is a hard work so having somebody that is going to remind you hey why haven't, haven't you done this today? Oh, yeah, I'm tired. Because you have not boss above you, you can just say, I'm tired. Let me just kick back. No, it doesn't work like that. Because, you know, um, I once saw a video where a guy says, you know, when you're at work and your boss tells you to take the bin out, you go and take the bin out. When they tell you to do X, Y, and Z, you go and do X, Y, and Z. So how come when you tell yourself things, you don't comply to them. And, you know, it just shows that lack of commitment sometimes to ourselves because only because someone's got that authority figure above us, uh, we're like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to get it done because we are risking something. But when we don't keep promises to ourselves, we are risking our potential. It's so yeah. true. Have you read The Four Agreements, Pauline? No, I haven't, but I will. Oh, that's a good one. It's short. And there's the, it's just these four rules. It's by, I've mentioned it on the podcast before. It's by Don Miguel Ruiz. It's very small. I have it on the shelf right there. And one of the rules is be impeccable with your word. Another mm -hmm. good rule is no expectations, no assumptions. Both of those two rules, I won't tell you the other two. You got to go read the book for the other two. But those two rules, you can apply in your everyday life. You can apply them in your trading. Like you just said, it's very easy to not be impeccable with your word, especially when you're talking to yourself and there's no repercussions from yourself. It's not like you're going to lash yourself in the back with a belt at the end of the day if you don't do the DRC, right, James? You're just going to be like, oh, I'm tired. Mm -hmm. Just forget it. But when you have that repercussion on the back end, that quote unquote, you could call it punishment, you tend to be more impeccable with your word, even when you talk to yourself. But I also think you have to have this internal motivation that some people just don't have. I think you have to have that, that fire within yourself to say, mm. I don't want to go to the gym, but I'm going to go to the gym. I don't want to stop trading today, but I'm going to stop trading today. And that's me often, like because I work at the desk, I'm here all day. I am the easiest person to succumb to over trading and giving back my gains. So yeah. I have to be very disciplined in my aware and use my awareness of that to not yeah. align myself with that version of myself that breaks my trading rules. That's all it is. Discipline to me is a choice to be the other version of yourself that you will look back on and regret being. That's how I think about it. So I tend to I tend to box the two things there. But definitely everybody listening, the four agreements, Don Miguel Ruiz must read for all traders. It's very small. But let's talk about Brian for a second, Paulina. Let's talk about yeah. just his journey yeah. and what it was like. Because I think a lot of people can take from hearing him on the podcast. I believe he was episode 89 and we're on 101 today. So he was a couple episodes back. But a lot of people you know, follow us every week. So they probably remember Brian talking about his journey and how a lot of psychological issues were in his way. So just speak on like what his process looked like, just so people get an idea of kind of what it's like working with you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, you know, I think in terms of Brian, like he struggled with what majority of people struggle with. And I think for him, the biggest thing was the overload of the information uh, because you kind of, you know, take a bit of information from here, a bit of information from here. And the thing is, that's great uh, because, you know, you have to be smart to really gather all of that. But a lot of traders tend to do that because, you know, you, you are trying to develop your edge. So essentially, you know, from Brian following one mentor or another mentor or one strategy or another strategy, we said, Brian, we need to make Brian strategy. We need to make BT, Brian Tang strategy. It's your edge that we are going to work on. And I think that was the game changer for him because, and it was, and it was you know, a, a big kind of commitment from his side. But I just want to mention like in terms of, cause you said, you know, how does coaching work like that and stuff like this. So, First of all, we did like kind of half and a half technical analysis as well as trading psychology. But one of the import most important thing is it's a team sport. So I can give you 10 hours speech about what you should do, how you should do it, the theory behind it, going into research about it, giving you examples. But if you are not going to put that work in by implementing the methods that I'm recommending, then it's never going to happen. And I always ask of people, and that's why I asked of Brian, I said, 
right i usually do like a four weeks coaching program so it's like four weeks after four weeks we review your progress you either stay move on approximately people stay for two months or I have some long-term clients that we always touch base and work together like with Brian you know he like he messaged me today he was like this is what I've done today based on your trading protocol very good I was like okay I've got approval from Brian <laughs> yeah yeah love that <laughs> two thumbs up <laughs> exactly so um we, so with Brian, um, he was very much taking him first through the journey of trading psychology and kind of opening things up, being real about things, where he wants to get to, what's his long term goal, short term vision, you know, and all of that. And um, we worked on limiting beliefs and self perception and, you know, how you see yourself uh, uh, on that journey, etc. But most of all, it was that kind of trial and error process that he wasn't afraid to engage in. But one thing I asked him, I said, give me four weeks, hate it or love it. You know, you are paying like 500 pounds and then you can blow that 500 pounds on a challenge or instead of blowing that on a challenge, you can try something else. And then, mm -hmm. you know, it's the same risk that you're taking, except that you are not doing the same and getting the same outcomes, you're doing something different. So perhaps your outcomes will be different. And um, that's how we took off. And then it was kind of like Brian working with me, going away on his own, coming back, working together again. Going I'm finding away. the same thing. There's a lot of people that, that yes. it ends up being like that, where they want to go do it on their own. Like I had a guy, who, so our program is 12 weeks long. It's three months. Mm -hmm. And like, we have guys that'll stay with us for six months. And I had a guy that's with me since January. He's graduating like a week ago, maybe two weeks ago now. And he said, I, I could stay. He's like, but I don't, I need to do this on my own. I need to see if I can stick to this discipline on my own. And I respect that. I don't think either of us, you or me built this business to coach traders to keep them forever. No coach really would want that. Like you want your players to move on and grow and continue to be, you know, the best version of themselves. So I think that that's interesting and uh, an interesting commonality that some of these guys will come for coaching, tap into it, and then try it on their own and then come back, tap in for some new things, see what do I need to adjust here and then go again on it their own. I think that's very common. Let mm -hmm. me ask you this. What, what makes Brian and some of your best clients successful? Like why are they so much more coachable than the other traders who never even go for mentorship, who never even try to get a coach. What do you think it is? Like, what is the difference maker that makes someone coachable? Mm -hmm. That is work ethic. Uh, like that's that's where you can put that put it down to, and, and and it's trust in a way as well because you know, um, you meet up with a coach and you know they ask you things like do this, do that, you know we build a morning routine, we're starting to meditate, we're doing this, we're doing that. And, you know, and, and you undergo your own journey and you may start meditation and stuff like that. But I say to my clients, so for me, meditation works, breathing technique works, cold shower works. For you, it might be, you know, shadow boxing, like, like Brian says in his tweet, you know, but if that works for him, that's a form of meditation. That is form of aligning yourself physically and mentally before you sit at the charts and do something and you experiment. So it is trust, in and, and and that's what I'm very strong. I was like, you have to trust me here. Right. You, like, you are running no risks. Like what I'm recommending, first of all, is evidence-based, you know, uh, from science, psychology, or experience. So you're running no risks. Like it's not harmful if you're gonna do a meditation session. It's not harmful if you are going to, you know, start marking your chart at the end of the day or start sending me like those little report cards of examining yourself and reflecting on your behavior and your emotions, et cetera, et cetera. So that, that is that, but then it has to come back from the person that you're working with. And it's the work ethic is the work ethic. And with Ryan is data collection. Like he would collect data on himself, on his behaviors, on his thought processes, on um, the market. And he's like, this is why I discovered can we like tap into that? And then we would break down some data and talk about it, you know. But you're not going to uh, get data collection if your work ethic sucks. So it all comes from work ethic. Everything, genuinely everything. It's a team sport. Like as much as I give and like, like you said, you know, genuinely for me, it's when I see whoever I work with succeed to me, that's my success because it's a reflection right. of me in a way, yeah. right? Yeah, um, So I want to take people in and get them out as fast as I can 
but obviously we need to make it reasonable. And, and I had some people I'd worked with for a month and, you know, that's it. They moved on. And I had some people actually, actually stuck with me and kind of, you know, but not like, you know, we meet in every week, like they just come back and we're checking in and we're doing all of that. So work ethic, which everything just goes down to discipline again, you know, and, and, and really implementing what I suggest. And some of the things that I suggested were new to him. And he was like, that's trading and you're asking me to do this. How does that? And then I would explain the links and stuff like that. And he was always eager to try and, and literally go through that trial and error to discover himself as a trader. Hims like mm. Because I feel like as traders, you build your own identity in a way. You have to. Uh, because if you don't, you will always try to get swayed into this technique, that technique. You know, what mm. does, does he say? She says. And we all kind of prone to that. You know, we all kind of always search for that meaning. But if you find that meaning yourself, within yourself, your purpose and why you're doing it, that's what's going to kind of motivate you to get you there. But one interesting thing about Brian, when he started uh, coaching uh, with me, he was in the army. Mm. So his discipline already was right. up here, you know? Right. Uh, I was going to yeah. say, do you think that it's the traders who fail fail because of lack of work ethic not lack of knowledge or intellectual ability in terms of why they fail yeah like they fail because most people i would because i've met some pretty dumb people that do well trading i would say like yes. you know what i mean 100 100 and you know what like actually uh, and i've not read study about it or anything like that and and maybe that would be a future research that i'm going to fund in the future you know and um, right I would really want to find certain characteristics of those traders who succeed and those traders who are struggling, like on yeah. an extreme level, they can't break through even though they try and because there are people like that. Now, sometimes doctors, lawyers, and people like with very specialized areas struggle the most in trading uh, because it almost goes down to, well, I will work hard. I will get rewarded, right? Mm, no, that that's number one. Number two, they overload themselves with information. So I know one person, one trader that I've known for a very long time. He's such a smart guy. He's so intellectual. And I believe he potentially has knowledge of every strategy going online. But he's still not a profitable trader. Yeah, because it's not it's not even about that anymore. You can have all the knowledge if you have if you lack the execution skills, you lack the confidence, you lack the humility. There's so many other characteristics other than yeah. knowledge that go into making money. You Absolutely. Know? Absolutely. And I saw some people trading the simplest strategy, like naked making chart. a killing. Yeah. I had oh a girl on the podcast. Do you know Tori Trades? Have you connected yes. with her yet? Yes, I did. I've not connected mm -hmm. with her, but I know of Tori. Yeah. When you look at her strategy, she trades trend lines. That's all it is, the mm. simple trend line thing. Like, that's it. So it's like, you can have the simplest strategy and you could give it to somebody. That doesn't mean they're going to execute it and be able to make money. There's like, a, like again, we're saying all these other external factors that do determine if you're going to be successful long-term. So what yeah. do you tell people, Paulina, when they ask you like one thing that you would tell every struggling trader? What would it be? Is there one blanket piece of advice that can help the general right. population? Morning routine, I swear to God. <laughs> I Being really, disciplined but, in the morning routine, like yes. doing something that makes you show discipline before you trade. Absolutely. So I'm, I'm going to explain the concept here because I get a lot of like people messaging me and like genuinely I find time. Like if I re haven't responded to somebody, I always really try my hardest and I give simple advice. And the simple advice is building morning routine and then at the end of the day, message me. So accountability, what Jane said about accountability. And I don't need to read the detail of that message. They just need someone to show the mark seen. That's it, you know? It. And then when they don't, I would give them a prompt. I was like, where, where is it? You know, why did you not do it? Um, but I, I will tell you about the morning routine. So I'll tell you about my, my morning routine and the purpose behind it and why I'm so strong uh, about it. So when it comes to what I do, I do cold shower. It's not even, we're not even discussing it. I'm not, I'm not negotiating with myself. Cold shower is a must. 
okay and then i would do my cup of coffee and then i would sit down i would meditate and i would do my breathing um Wim Hof breathing technique which is kind of comes and goes to my morning routine I don't always do it but now I found that you know actually doing it is very beneficial for me like really relaxes me etc now there are additional things you could do you could read in the morning you could journal you could listen to motivational videos you could work out you could do so many different things now there is simplicity in my morning routine and I go out for a walk I, I leave the house like and I've got dogs so it's very like good excuse for me to go for a walk with my dogs so the cold shower the cold shower is not just for the benefit of you know that you are going to develop more brown cells that are going to help you lose weight and you know there are benefits for your biology and there are benefits for your skin and da, 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 da. i do it for different reasons discipline because this is very very much uh, closely married up to trading when you think about the cold shower uh, and when I'm standing there, and let's say now it's getting dark in the UK, like a lot quicker. And when I get up, it's still dark and it's getting colder. The last thing you want to do is go from a warm bed into a freezing cold shower. The last thing. But to me, that is my core of building my discipline into my day. Because it is not about the benefits, which are great that they are there, but it is about me winning with my mind. Because my mind, mm. our brains are designed to protect us. Your brain is not here to make you feel happy, none of that. Your brain is here to make you survive. When your brain sees a threat, like I'm going to get freezing cold in this shower, it is going to find every excuse under the sun to tell you, don't do it. Don't do it. It's cold. Maybe tomorrow you're tired. You didn't sleep well. It's not actually that good for you, et cetera, et cetera. So to me, it's about winning with that inner voice that is trying to put me out of my misery, which is very close to trading. Traders want to put themselves out of the misery when they experience a stop loss and start chasing the markets. So it's me focusing on the long-term reward by putting myself through short-term discomfort and that to me is non-negotiable and I have to do it and that has been one of the key factors that translated into my discipline on the charts well yeah Afterwards, because trade like that's what trading is short-term yes. discomfort for long-term gain absolutely and you know after the shower I feel on top of the world I do and then that's good and then, but I deserved it I, I've earned it I've earned it to feel good. So I went through like one and a half minutes standing there. And to be fair, again, it's one of those things, you know, when you start going a little bit at the time, it's horrible. You just have to throw yourself. It in. is horrible. It yeah. Is. You just, you just you hear what she's saying, bed. James? You can't just make your bed and think you're having a disciplined morning. All right, bro. You better get your ass in the shower. <laughs> I was working out this morning in the sauna. But um, no, I, 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 my, it's actually funny you mentioned that. So I was on the treadmill today. Mm -hmm. And um, one of my friends at the gym. So I'm actually thinking, I'm kind of transitioning. It's actually funny you mentioned this that now about morning routine because I'm actually transitioning into trading for the instead of trading the London session, I'm starting to transition to trading the New York session uh, in, in the currency market. Stock just Bruce, found that, right? Stock Bruce. Yeah, so, <laughs> according to my my stats, my better trades are coming in the afternoons, which mm -hmm. you know, afternoons for, for you and I, mornings for Austin. But um uh, so I'm thinking of actually going to gym in the mornings uh, and and pre and then after I can't go, come back from the gyms, then then prepping, you know, for the day, yeah. looking at what's on my watch list and that sort of thing. So I was on the treadmill today and I, I, had, I did this thing of uh, I ru always run five, 200 meters, uh, five, 400 meters um, just and with like a minute and a half break in between. I yeah. just like yeah. doing it on the treadmill to get my heart rate up and my, at the end of it. And I always go max, max on the treadmill and my one mate. At the end, it was like on the last one, nah, you're going 500 meters. You're going 500 meters. I know I was tired. And it's like, you're going, you're going 500 meters. But pushing your mind into tricking, you're like my, my body, my mind's telling me that I'm that I'm sore and I need to get off the treadmill. But if you just, just another, just an extra 100 meters and it, it's like, I did it, you know? 100%. It's easy, right? Because the, the brain says you're done at 40%. Right. When you, yeah. I've heard that yeah. before. Like when you're doing pull ups, your brain will start to say, Hey, I'm tired, but you still have 60% left in the tank. So whatever they say, the science behind that is. That's crazy. 
it really is like, imagine how do people achieve extraordinary things by giving into their thoughts and their brains and no, saying, and when your brain, your brain is signaling, oh, you are tired, especially athletes or like, you know, David Goggins, love David Goggins. That's who I was just thinking about. <laughs> yeah. How does he achieve things that, you know, that he's achieving? The crazy fluid in his knee and he still runs. The bliss, exactly. broken feet, broken toes, and he's running. It's the mind. That, exactly. Um, and, and this is where, sorry to interrupt you, James. This is where no, actually going back to the gym mm -hmm. and to me, it's literally put yourself consciously through discomfort in your day. We are living mm. in such a comfortable society where we are scrolling through the phone and we have our food at hand. And, you know, I sometimes when I was busy, I got to the point that I got food delivered to me, not just a takeaway, mm. but like shopping and this and that. And I'm like, how lazy is this? OK, OK, I'm busy, whatever. But if you want to make time, you should make time to leave and, and, and do all of those different things. But genuine genuinely make yourself do things that you hate so at the gym there is a stepper you know when you just climb yeah, it yeah. i hate it but because i hate it i do it yeah. genuinely and that is like pure um motivation from david goggins i'm not even gonna lie like to me but that's like, internal motivation too like that's yeah. you yeah, yeah, that's yeah, the yeah. same reason james is running on the treadmill when everybody yeah. else it's much easier to go to the gym and just do dumbbell curls yeah. than it is to go do a full CrossFit workout. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but it's that battle that you go through here, and you, you know, you have to start. And I got all like David Goggins at the gym. I don't use my headphones yeah. either because he's oh, like, "Oh, you're crazy, Paulina." I knew you were crazy, but <laughs> now I know you're really crazy. <laughs> Genuinely, um, like. But Go on, go on. No, I wanted to. I want, so you had a tweet here the other day, Paulina. I wanted to. So this is kind of what we're speaking about now. And you said, uh, I, I save a lot of your tweets on my phone, by the way. Oh, <laughs> They're good. Uh, that's so you great. said, um, I, I just love how trading makes you a better person in everyday life. You walk uh, you walk through life understanding that the only thing you can con control is yourself. Your thoughts, your emotions, and your responses to external events. Nothing else matters but your inner control. And just something like the other day, for for me that that happened so i was uh i was driving and my, my car battery ended up packing out i can either get angry mm -hmm. and then try you know and i always i always think to myself it was like you know like there's no point getting upset or anything like that you got to just take it on chin sort it out it takes like the whole day to sort something out but and you're tired by the end of the day because it's so much admin yeah. but at the end of the day if if i get in the past like even a year ago james like i would have got angry and started swearing and throwing a big f f fuss at everything. But I'm just sitting there and like, well, dude, I can't do anything. I called it my insurance. I was like, cool, bring the tow truck. We're going to sort this out and we get it done. Um, and I think that's kind of how trading is. Like when you, when you take a loss, you can't get all flustered in that. You just have to take, kind of take it on the chin. Um, yeah. And also again, like we were going back and forth. I have this other one here, something from your, from your, from yourself, just, Speaking about drawdown, I know we're going back and forth about this, about, and I think this is kind of when, when it, like in that emotional discomfort as well is, is in drawdown. I've sat in drawdown, actually just reached a new equity half for the first time in a month and a half now uh, today. So um, you spoke, I know we're going back and forth on this one, this is about end of August, but you said, uh, you had a, a tweet that says, as a trader, you have to stay competent. You cannot behave poorly and expect results of a competent trader. Competent traders go through the same pain as you do, but they don't give into it. They are okay with discomfort, drawdown, emotions, and losing streaks. Or, uh, losing streaks are you. And then I commented something and you replied to me, which I thought was quite profound. You said, 100%, drawdown is part of our job, just as much as profits are. Um, the most important skill is to stay calm and humble in the moments of drawdown and in the moments of profitable moments, neutral performance mindset. And I thought that that was really, really interesting because I never actually really saw it like that is in terms of months where we're making new equity highs, you know, almost every single week or whatever it is, we okay with that. But then as soon as the drawdowns come, we're like, no, oh, no, we don't want to do, we don't want to do that. We just want to come back and trade and get out of that the next day. Um, so maybe you speak on your thoughts. How have you seen your traders that you've worked with stay calm in drawdowns or yourself even uh, for long, extended periods of time? So that it is all about having that you know long term vision. Now it's so easy to say that, isn't it? Like have a long term vision, see where you're going, but. It, it really is all about breaking it down um, in terms of, you know, working backwards. So when you have your long-term goal, you have to kind of work backwards. 
um, in terms of understanding what you do in your day to improve yourself. So what I try to do uh, when I work with anybody is to shift their focus onto their performance, onto their habits, onto their behaviors. So they feel like they are in control of their progress. They are in control of, you know, growing as a person, as a trader. And then in the moments of drawdown, they don't think, wow, everything's out of control. Everything is blowing up. Instead, actually, what they are thinking is, okay, I can see the progress that I am making, but yes, I am currently in drawdown. And it also now, you know, um, because like trading psychology is so important, but equally understanding your data is just as important, you know? And, and one of the key things that you said, James, is like, I switched to New York session because my data is telling me. So it is really about detaching uh, trading psychology and having awareness like of your emotions and all of that but then actually understanding that in the markets you should only be making data driven decisions uh, because you should and, and I even remind traders how they use their language and their vocabulary if they say um I want the markets to get here I was like nobody cares that you want the markets to get here what you can say I you know what I am anticipating that the market may come back to this level. And if it does, this is what I'm going to do. So it really is all about um, detaching, but then understanding your data and collecting enough data, either through life markets, backtest, uh, or both, ideally, to understand, you know, what is your winning streak? What is your losing streak? Uh, so then when you are doing the challenges, you know what risk, fac risk factor you can apply and what are the probabilities in your edge. So, you know, if you are a trader that could take 10 losses in a row and then, you know, five wins are going to sort you out, that's fantastic, but you should not be trading at 1% risk doing your challenges because you are going to be wiped so then we know that you should be trading at least at half percent or even less so then you've got that leverage you know so it really is all about then looking at the bigger picture and it's me sitting with traders and showing them their data or, or doing back tests together and kind of showing them look those are the patterns and then i, I make them understand things uh, and, and I make them um, also showcase my data and, and read my data. So I've done purposefully like six months of backtest on my edge when I recorded everything, when I've got like the graph and, and, and all of that, every month is profitable. And overall, so, you know, when you look at the backtest, it says like 120% return and they're like, oh, wow, losing their mind. I was like, no, don't lose your mind because during that period, I had losing weeks. So they were losing weeks in between. They were losing streaks of like six losing streaks. And that could happen in one week or one trade after another. And then what? And, and this is where you have to learn to understand yourself. And that's what I do. Like, you know, especially what Austin said really resonated with me because I would be coaching at my screens and all of that. The charts out there, they were always kind of calling me and I would look and I would do this and I would do that. And like one minute is my biggest nemesis, you know, that's why I removed myself from it as well. But sometimes when I'm undergoing a losing streak, I go back to my data and I just look at it and I'm like, this is the return. This is what, you know, I am able to get with my edge, but at the moment I'm going through that period of drawdown of where it feels shitty. It does. Of yeah. course it does. I acknowledge that, but there is nothing I can do about it. And until you actually embrace what trading is in terms of a job, because people just see it as a quick profit where it's not, you have to embrace it for missed opportunities, for break-even trades, for losses, for take profits, all of those factors as important as each other and all of those factors will happen all the time like people think sometimes the more they will learn their stop losses will disappear i will tell you right now your stop losses will never disappear you you will always lose you will always you, lose unless you trade so, without one pardon <laughs> unless, <laughs> unless, unless you trade without one <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. well there we go that's a solution <laughs> 
so <laughs> it really is about that and you know i hate you know to say it and be that preacher like meditate and stuff like that but um and you know I, i'm gonna go back to brian brian's tweet um mm -hmm. where he said oh you know you meditate in the morning i shadow box we're not the same and i was going to comment underneath and say i do both you're right we are not the same <laughs> um, <laughs> you know? but then i was like you know what? i'm gonna leave it i'm gonna leave you should have that's what twitter's for that. half the time i feel like half the time twitter is just for sarcastic replies like that you know what i'm saying yeah. like it's not for being serious twitter is not always that serious <laughs> I, I have it. two two questions for you paulina i want to finish this has been great and i know we're a little over our time but it's okay because I, I think we need to touch on this give me a quick answer to your opinion on full-time trading that that's a tough one um very tough one because this is what people are aiming for right because they think that full time trading is going to pull them out of the 9 to 5 jobs but really it is all about them being unhappy in the 9 to 5 job so for instance if they were doing a job that they absolutely loved they would be looking of combining it together. For instance, I would say that's us. Like we found passion in coaching. We found passion in, you know, connecting with people and we are traders and we are doing both. So I would never stop coaching ever. Like that gives me the biggest buzz or like talking with you guys and having the same mindset and bouncing up ideas. People to me are everything. So it really is what people are looking for by trying to be full-time traders is they're looking for change of their circumstances. So I think they should focus on change of their circumstances and not put that pressure on trading. I have done that myself, especially dur during COVID period. I was already trading for some time. Um, but during COVID, um, a lot of funding went into physical health services, not mental health services. Therefore, there was not a lot of demand for research and therefore funding so my hours went to part-time you know so as my hours went to part-time I was perceiving trading as my way out uh, but I was just digging a hole because I was actually underperforming at my job and I was underperforming on the charts and I got to the point when I was like I've got enough of both of you I was literally like as if I'm having a conversation I was like I'm quitting this, which was my job, without a plan, knowing what I'm going to do next. And I was like, and I'm not trading. As soon as I have done that and removed all of those pressures, everything fell onto my lap. And it didn't fall onto my lap. I worked You worked off. for it. Yeah, you worked exactly. for it. Exactly. But it's the mental pressure that, you know, just switched. So I would always say, if you are very adamant about becoming a full-time trader, uh, because you want to free yourself from nine to five and you don't want to have that freedom of being with your family, et cetera. It all sounds very appealing until you're like, mm, actually, I want to fulfill my potential and do something else. However, if that is something you want to do, I would say at minimum, very minimum, have at least three months financial backing. At least, I'm, I'm talking like this is the lowest threshold. And if you're an experienced trader, a very good trader, but then we're looking at six months that your bills are paid, your rent or your mortgage is paid, that you can feed yourself, your family, if everything is sorted and, you know, you will cut down on like your lifestyle, going to restaurants and stuff like that. And you're cool with that, which I think it's actually what makes you humble as a trader. And you should do that. It's like any other business. If you No trader is going to do that. If they're quitting their job to go into full-time trading, they're going to be like, I'm eating out every meal. I'm a full-time <laughs> trader now, you know? So, but you're right. I totally agree with what you're saying. And mm -hmm. I think three months is low. I totally agree as well. I think that's the minimum, minimum. What do you think about yeah. just in, in a bigger picture to that question, the second question to stem off, what do you think about just keeping other streams of income coming in as a trader? Like you said, kind of adapting your lifestyle to creating other ways of making money that maybe align with your passions or maybe require learning a new skill. Have you been pushing people in that direction at all in your coaching? Like just well, take Joe, for example, you know? Yes. So my Joes yeah. are doing very well in all um, realms of de personal development, because really what I'm working about on, 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 what I'm working on is really with people, not on the trading or, or, or any of that. I'm working with people to, for them be the best versions of themselves and to fulfill their potential. Like 
and I think that's very personal to me because for me, you know, when people ask you, what's your biggest fear when, when you retire and stuff like that? For me, it's not money. For me, it's um, when I am older, 80 or whatever, my biggest fear is to look back at my life and say to myself, you didn't take risks. And you, the biggest one now is you did not fulfill your potential. Like to me, this is this is the number one. If I look back and I be like, you have not fulfilled your potential as a person in your life, I would feel like I have failed. Yeah, because disappointment hurts more than failure. Disappointment is, is heavier than anything else. Absolutely. And then now going back to your question is like, you know, I'm assuming that if you want to become a trader, you have like financial ambition into yeah. like, you know, becoming financially free, not having to rely on nine to five, you know, making more than the standard salaries that are offered in your country as, and stuff like that. So, of course, you should be looking for other streams of income. Of course, like that's so natural. Like, actually, it's recommended to have seven, you know. Right. To, but I think a lot of I, it's good for people to hear you say it, too, because I say it all the yeah. time. And I think people just think that you're just going to have money rain from the sky right. as a full-time trader you got to be ready for down months you got to be ready for down years and most people i would argue cannot handle it if they are only relying on that stream of income i've seen more people stay you would call them full-time traders even if they have yeah. other ways of making money at the same time they've started a business and they're doing they've stayed in that position of being a full-time trader they're spending more mm -hmm. time with their fam because they have that other income coming in during yes. the down periods when they would normally then be even more stressed. It's just keeping the stress away is really the idea. So you can trade as best as possible, right? Absolutely. 100%. It, it, it's just, it's not brainer, you know, and I understand that people perceive trading as a way out because you can make so much money. And yeah, then but you could dig yourself into a terrible yeah. hole if you go too soon especially mm -hmm. with, with challenges and all of that you're looking for that yes. home run to sort right. you out it's not going to happen it, it genuinely it's not going to happen and looking at other streams of income is it, just a natural thing that you should be doing because i tell you one thing because i've experienced it as well like when you like a full-time trader and just rely on trading your down months you won't be able to cope like that's right. it. it's you very difficult yeah, yeah, you would think even you're for the best traders in all like guys I've had on the show, like Crudelli and I think about Tom Canfield, right, James? Like these guys that they yeah. do rely mainly on their trading for full time income. They don't have education business, they don't have another business on the side, they don't have anything else. They take big, big losses and they have to step away from their trading sometimes for long periods of time to to build it back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. One hundred percent. Uh yeah. it's it's difficult. It, Difficult. It's a grind. It's a, it's a grind. And that's why it's good for like, you know, I, I'm big on having people like yourself on the podcast because we push the same message. We don't tell people, hey, I'm going to teach you how to be a full time trader and quit your job in a month. I'm, that's never been what we've pushed. You know what I mean? We've pushed that, hey, we're going to bring in 10 people and maybe two of you will be trading really, really well in a year from now. That's just yeah. the numbers. You know, that's really <laughs> just the that. Yeah, 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 100%. And that just makes me think about a few of my clients or one of my long term clients. And you know, he's a full time trader, but he also works on weekends. And he also has a business. And he's hustling and he's barely sleeping. He only right. has Sundays for like quick recovery. And the rest of the time, he's like, you know, making money Then I've got another one. And they did like, uh, another one that left his full time job, for example, but by the time he has done that, he's like secured himself financially, developed another business. Then the trading is like a almost secondary thing because now he's like, okay, I'm financially safe. I, I can have more time and I can really focus on trading, but not to make money, but, but to become better trader. Yeah, you know? and then that scales. I think that that scales exactly. and compounds very quickly. But I think that's the right approach. I totally am in the same boat. I think that's James followed that same blueprint, and that's why he's in the position he is just now. I mean, I think he's, he was even talking about putting an offer in on his first house today. Got engaged this year, getting married. The man is moving up. The man is moving up. Yeah. No, but it's been this has been a great conversation, Paulina. I've I knew I was going to enjoy this. I think our audience definitely enjoyed it. I know that they did. But I think for today, 
I want to put a pin in it here because what I'd like to do is leave it open to the people in the comments. Let us mm -hmm. know what we should discuss with Paulina on the next episode. We're definitely going to have Paulina on maybe in the beginning of 2024. Definitely want to dive into some of the funding stuff and talk about that, Paulina. I even want to talk about having you come and speak to my community, the guys that have uh, been a part of our VIP and our course and everything. Cause I think you and I could do some business together, maybe have it come into a workshop with the guys. I just, I really enjoy your take. I really enjoy your content. And that was why I wanted to have you on the show. So this has been great. Tell everybody where they can connect with you, Paulina. Twitter is best. Yeah. Twitter is the best. Yes. I'm very active on Twitter. Um, I feel like Twitter is quite real, you know, so my handle is I Paulina KJ. So uh, you can find me there. How do you say uh, your last name, Paulina? <laughs> you want the the English version or the Polish ver version? The so Polish the version. Give me the Polish okay. version. Okay, the Polish ver version is Juzwiak. Okay, I would I would have been wrong. Uh, yeah, but in England it's Joswiak. Joswiak, yeah, yeah. yeah okay, yeah. cool. So yeah. I was not too far off. All right, good, good. No, I love it. I love it. So we'll make sure the Twitter is linked for you and of course for James down in the description. Paulina, I can't thank you enough for the time. It's been amazing. James, thank you as always, brother. And for now, everybody. We're putting a pin in it. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any future episodes. And we will see you guys in the next one. Thanks, everybody.